Hey everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you. And today, I'm actually going to be able to put a normal 5800 head to head with a 5800X 3D. Now, I hadn't tested the 5800X because AMD just hadn't sent it. Now, they did send me, I was a 5800X 3D, but I obviously didn't have the data to be able to compare the two. <coughs> Now, I know a lot of you are going to be saying, why didn't you just buy one? If I went and bought a processor, every time I had a gap in the graphs, then I'd quite literally be bankrupt. People assume that everyone that does YouTube videos are millionaires, and that's really not the case. So, I was actually quite lucky in that PC specialist said, do you want to review a 5800X 3D system? And my colleague, uh, Von, who does all the systems for the OC3D website, they sent an early version with a 5800X in it and then sent the 5800X 3D later. Sounds confusing, but at the time it actually made a load of sense. So there was a brief period where we had both processors. So all of the testing today was done by Von and uh, it's one of the only times we've ever actually had the ability to have the same 5800X in the same system as the 5800X 3D because obviously I did the standalone review before but this is with it all tested on the same system. So a complicated story but nevertheless it means that we have direct head-to-head -head data that we can talk about today. Now I have also just looked online at prices for both processors. Now the 5800X 3D on scan today when I checked was £409. Surprisingly the difference between uh, the two is actually £100 because the vanilla 5800X is only £309. So there's a £100 difference. Performance wise or rather like on the clock they go about achieving their uh, goals in a slightly different way because obviously you get the 3D cache with the 5800X 3D, but it does run at a lot lower speeds. You might see just over 4.4 gigahertz on the 3D, and that's because of the way that it all ties in with the cache and the fact that they can't change the voltage and um, base clock scores and stuff. But the vanilla 5800X goes up to 4.8. Now, there is no overclocking on the v 3D cache model, but with the, uh, the normal one, you can still normally fairly easily with decent cooling and a fairly basic use of the BIOS or knowledge of the BIOS should be able to get all cores running at 4.8 on all of them. But you also get the option of precision boost overdrive and increasing power limits and doing things even in a basic way. But we tested these just fitted and, and run. So very vanilla, basicness not trying to skew the 5800X, but there is definitely more performance that you could eke out of the 5800X if you wanted to spend a little bit of time and stuff like that. Now, gaming performance is the thing that AMD want you to be, or want me to shout about with the 5800X 3D, and they're not wrong. It does perform better in games. It is the processor that is designed for gaming performance. And you can see with the basic ones that we've done here today that the 3D is ahead in most of them. If it's surprisingly, with control, it did very, very well, uh, especially compared to the vanilla 5800X. And we did go back and rerun that a few times, but gaming performance is the one where you're going to see it pull in front more. Now, weirdly, with Cinebench R23, it did well in that as well, even though that's a synthetic and multi-core benchmark it did very well in that as well the other ones you can actually see the higher clock speed from the vanilla 5800x coming into its own there if you want to go and have a look on the oc3d website by the way this system review is live on the oc3d website and this written review and all the other benchmarks for the cpu head-to-head -head is also live on the website as well now the one thing that we do have to remember is the price. And I think that we do also need to remember that 
costs are going up at home, you know, energy prices are going through the roof, fuel prices are going through the roof, everything's getting more expensive. So we do need to spend our money wisely. Now the 5800X3D could be a great upgrade for someone if you've already inv invested in the ecosystem. So let's for argument's sake say you've got the board already and you're running an old X370 system and you just want something and you are just a gamer, then that could be a decent upgrade for one of you guys at home. If you're looking at building a new rig though, or you're on a tighter budget, then in reality, the 5800X is probably the one that I would head for because you're going to have a slightly better overall use. And if you're going to overclock and things like that, then, you know, that's kind of where the smart money would be. Save you £100 and maybe buy a bigger hard drive or something. The way I look at the 5800X3D, it's, it's almost a proof of concept. It's a new product. They're trying to go about it in a new way and they're adding this 3D V-cache on. And if you think about it, it's a slower processor, but it pretty much keeps up with a faster one with the same amount of cores. So they've proven that they can go about things in a different way and still get the same performance. But I don't personally think it's an extra hundred pounds worth of performance based on the data that we've seen. I think, yes, it's good with games, but other than control, I don't particularly think that's £100 extra worth of money. But it is definitely good to see AMD trying new things and pushing the boundaries in different ways. And I think that this is kind of an inkling of what we might see coming later on. And that they'll fine-tune this and uh, you know work on this and it will get better and better and better. But for the first one, I think they've done pretty well. Like I said, it's kind of a proof of concept. They've done relatively well. But in reality, based on the two side by side, I'd probably go with the vanilla 5800X, save your money, and then maybe spend the next, that money that you save. And it was at that point that the uh, microphone batteries died. But that just leaves me to say, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, click the links to the reviews underneath for both the system and for the CPU itself. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you out. Ding! Love you, sis.